Hello, and welcome back to another great episode of Hashtag Screw the W2. And today's guest I have on is the uh, the founder of Next Level Income, but I'll let him go into more detail of that and maybe first of all, what his previous W2 job was. Chris, welcome to the show. John, thanks for having me here. We're going yeah. Yeah, to have a good time chatting about our, our past. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's got a interesting story to tell. It's like, no, I've not had any recordings that were pretty much duplicates. They always kind of have their own uh, unique twist to them, so, so to speak. So, but uh, Chris, if you can kind of take us back, you know, you know, back in time, however long ago that was, uh, what was your previous W-2? You know, what was an average day like? Uh, yeah. You know, kind of take us back to that time. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to. And, you know, as, as, uh, as you're listening today, if you're if you're listening to the show, and you want to get a copy of my book and kind of dive deeper into my story, you can get a free copy at nextlevelincome.com. Click oh, on the perfect. book link and yeah, I even send you a copy. Um, I spent 18 years in the medical device space, John. So I spent okay. um, actually the first two, one and a half, two years was in was in pharmaceuticals was with Pfizer. And okay. what happened is that I was in college. Uh, I was actually racing my bicycle and there's a long story there. Um, okay. with, with kind of why I quit and, uh, um, you know, decided to, uh, kind of jump into the workforce okay. and I wasn't a hundred percent sure what I wanted to do, but I, I started buying real estate when I was 21 years old, wow. but I ran out of, I ran out of capital. So I said, okay, I gotta go get a job. And I went to borders bookstore. We didn't have a Barnes and Noble. I went to Virginia tech and <laughs> went to borders down the road. And I found this book and it was, it was like a hundred careers where you can make a hundred thousand dollars, something okay. to that effect or six figure career, something like that. And I start looking through it and I, I always was into sales and I don't, I don't know why it just happenstance, but when I was 12 year, years old, I started selling wrapping paper door to door to make some money. I sold newspapers. Um, wow. I sold in college. I sold, uh, actually sold Herbalife. So I sold supplements. <laughs> okay. I had a supplement business. I sold lofts. I had a loft business. So I was always kind of entrepreneurial sure. into sales. I thought, okay, this is cool. And I, I came across pharmaceutical sales. I'm like, this is interesting. I had a biomechanical engineering degree and okay. I, I also got my real estate license. So I was selling real estate <laughs> and I ended up selling insurance. So life insurance. Um, okay as I was finishing my MBA. And while I was working for this agent who happened to be Frank Beamer's nephew, who was the football coach of Virginia tech. At oh, the wow. Time, <laughs> he said, Chris, you got to meet my friend. You guys would really hit it off. And he does something cool. He sells like these medical uh, implants, these, these medical equipment. And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. So I called the guy's name's Alan. I call Alan. I said, Hey, can I take you out to lunch? T take him out to lunch. And he tells me um, what he does. And he goes into surgery with surgeons he actually sells the implants, the orthopedic implants, like hips and knees and oh, okay. all this stuff. And I'm like, this is so cool because this is what I studied in my undergraduate degree. And I said, well, how much do you make? He told me what he made. He made a healthy six-figure income doing this. And I said, wow. how can I do it? <laughs> so, um, and then, you know, part of the issue is you, you don't just jump right into that. So um, that's why I went to work for Pfizer to get a little bit of experience, get my foot in the door. Um, okay. But ultimately that's what I wanted to do. So Took me a few years, but um, you know, after after a few years, I ended up working for Johnson and Johnson, doing exactly what Alan was doing, which was selling uh, hips, knees, trauma. Um, okay. And uh, but it's uh, we can I can kind of stop right there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think of that old, old jingle: uh, hands, oh, was it head, shoulders, knees, and toes? And it's like, oh, that's probably what you uh, end up yeah, right? one. one one point or another <laughs> yeah which is funny because i ended up in spine and we did a lot of uh, spine surgery neck surgery all the way up okay. to the cranium so yeah gotcha now uh you know for many of my listeners out there you know they're probably thinking you know even at a hundred thousand dollars you know the lowest six figure well yeah. gee that's a pretty good income and you know depending where yeah. you're at you know that's you know a healthy lifestyle that can afford everything you want uh you know what made you decide to leave that or what was your I got to get out of here moment or I can't yeah. do this the rest of my life. Yeah. So it's interesting. I, I used to train reps. So after I was, I was in, in my role for, for a while, um, I'd have reps that would come and train. I said, listen, okay. I said, you know, you, you've got to have an exit plan. And the thing is, I was said the medical device role, medical device sales role. Once you're successful, your next question is how, how can I stop doing this? And okay. it's very challenging. You're, you're on call. I was on call for 12 years. I worked an average of six days a week. 
You Oof. know, there were days where I'd work, you know, like days straight. I worked seven months straight one time with, <laughs> without, without 10 days in the hospital, like only 10 days did I not go in seven. Wow. Months straight. <laughs> um, I slept three nights in the hospital one time. Um, I'd go in at 11 PM, 3 AM, you know, I'd sleep in call rooms. I'd be driving around trying to find implants, heavy logistics. You're, you know, you're on wow. call, you're at the demand and beck and call. But I averaged between three and $400,000 during my career okay. as my income. So yeah, people would be like, well, what's, what's the issue with that? The issue is I had a family. Mm -hmm. And again, I talk about this in my book. My father died when I was five years old oh, and I wanted to spend a lot of time with my children, with my two boys now 11 and 13. And I wanted, I had an exit plan to get out when I was 40. The thing is I was, I was working and I was having a good time. Um, in my role, I'd moved into a leadership role later at the end of my career. And I said, Hey, this is, you know, I'm going to do this in, as long as it's fun. And I actually hit the point where I was financially independent from our real estate business, okay. but I kept, I kept doing it. But the day came when I had to drive, um, I ended up having to go back in the ER and cover a case. I didn't feel like I was prepared to cover. Okay. I drove five hours, uh, the day before a case set up. 11 o'clock at night, getting everything ready for the case the next day, the case gets delayed. So instead of first thing in the morning, it goes in the afternoon. We Ugh. finish the case late at night. I get a hotel room because I got to wait now for the instruments to get processed. I'm gone another day. I drive back home the following day. So now I've been gone, you know, three days mm -hmm. for, this, for this one case. The case went okay. Um, it was actually a, um, a drug addict that had a spinal infection and they had to remove part of her spine. So it was just, wow. you know, it was just kind of like a disaster on every, every level. We scrambled to get implants in. We couldn't find somebody to cover the case. I had to step in and do it myself. You know, it was just, and I'm, I'm driving home and my, my boss at the time, my, my, the vice president I worked with calls me because I was in a leadership role. I wasn't really mm -hmm. supposed to be covering cases, sure. Um, but I'd covered thousands in my life. So it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. And he was asking me how it went. I was like, it went okay. And, you know, and I just, it just hit me. I was like, you know what? This isn't okay. Like it didn't go okay. I'm not really being truthful here. And I, I, I'll never forget hanging up, driving into my, my garage. And I said to myself, that's it. I'm done. And this was, this was around October of, uh, uh, 2020. So we're coming back from COVID sure. and I worked, I worked a few more months and I went on this ski trip with my son and we actually went to Alta, which is interesting. Cause I just took him there as a surprise for his 13th birthday. Two oh, years cool. Later. <laughs> yeah. And I, he said, dad, man, I had, I had so much fun. I want to do more of this with you. Mm -hmm. And we were flying back on the airplane and I was writing my business plan for the next year. And I decided wow. then and there, John, I wrote out the business plan without me in it, I presented it two days later to my boss. And he said, Chris, this is great. He goes, but I'm kind of confused because you're not a part of it. Or, <laughs> or what, what part do you fit in? He was just, he was a little, and I said, I'm not. So we worked out a, a plan for me to exit that role, hand it okay. over um, to somebody else. And um, fortunately I had that plan B with the real estate to step, step sure. into. But um, yeah, that was the, uh, I'll never forget that day, right? right over here in my driveway driving in. Wow. So uh, with that said, and obviously it was recent and you kind of, you know, like I said, very visual on that moment, so to speak, but I'm assuming that you remember the exact day of this was the last day that I clocked in and clocked out of my W2 job. Yeah. So the day I, I, I it was January 2nd, 2021. Okay. That I told my, I told my boss that I was leaving. Um, but we actually, we worked together. So I had kind of, a um, an exit plan and I, I consulted okay. for, for a period of time to, to help them do that. But January 2nd, 2021 was, was that the, the day that we decided uh, I'd be exiting. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah, a little over two years ago at the time of this recording. Yep. So, um, with yep. that, and you know, I know you said you spent about 18 years and obviously you kind of went over the, yeah. uh, the bad and the ugly of, you know, those yeah. long hours of the job, but do you looking back, yeah. is there anything you miss from that? Or do you have any regrets from leaving your W2 job? You know, it's, I think the thing is you miss the people. I was just texting with uh, a friend. He's, he's actually a surgeon yesterday. It was his birthday. And I miss seeing being in the OR and having those mm -hmm. relationships because you have, you have, you have pretty, 
you know, pretty meaningful relationships when you spend that much time in, in stressful situations with individuals. Um, sure. and I will say that the, the big challenge I had, cause in, in between that period in October, when I said, Hey, I'm leaving in January, when I actually, you know, made, made it, um, you know, verbally express that the challenge I faced, John was, what am I going to do tomorrow? Like mm-hmm. if I leave, you know, am I going to be relevant? What if nobody calls <laughs> yeah. me? What if nobody needs my help? And you know, I think it's interesting, you know, the grass is always greener in a sense, but you know, whatever you do, whether you, you know, whether you leave a role or whether you start your own business or, or, or have a new role, especially in our culture, you know, I would say even especially so as men in our culture, you know, we define mm-hmm. ourselves by what we do yeah, and that can be good, but it also has a downside and, mm-hmm. You know, the downside is, you know, how are you relevant? I think as, as individuals, we strive to be relevant. We strive to provide meaning. And it took me a while to kind of really, you know, grasp my new why, so to sure. speak. And, you know, how I was going to be relevant and create meaning and and ultimately value in the world. Yeah, no, I definitely, yeah, I can empathize with you, with you there. And I mean, I spent 12 years, I was a, a copier sales guy. So I was even known as the copier guy or the printer guy and it even took yeah. me a while that, and people ask me, what do you do? I'd say, well, I'm an investor, an educator, and realtor in that order. <laughs> so now with there that, you, uh, you yeah. know, on the flip side of that, Chris, uh, you know, I obviously miss the people, the relationships. Uh, but, you know, since that January of 2021, uh, in that two years uh, since then, what's the be- been the best part of your journey? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I, uh, I, I flew my son out to surprise him on his 13th birthday last week to Utah. Okay. And, uh, we skied, we skied for two days, you know, having the flexibility, if my son has a day off from school, you mm-hmm. know, to take a day off and, and do what I want with them. Um, you know, from a personal perspective that, that has been the biggest thing. Um, gotcha. I, I had COVID, but aside from that, I've been sick. My health's been okay. fantastic. Um, but the other thing is, you know, now at next level income, what we do is we help others achieve financial independence. Mm. Um, we even came out with a course here recently that you and I were chatting about before the show, you know, helping people you know, figure out how to make more money, whether that's a career shift or, or shifting from a career to a business, keep sure. more money through tax strategies and estate planning strategies, and ultimately learning how to evaluate investments, investments and options, whether it's active you yep. know, like <laughs> you and I are, John, or whether it's passive as well. And that's a big part of what we do is is we provide passive investment opportunities and we have over uh we have almost 900 people now in our community of investors wow um, we've uh we have uh nearly 100 million dollars of active invested capital um since we started and you know even one of my best moments was when my uh college roommate called me and said hey chris i, I want to talk to you about something and he was uh very did very well with um, a prominent company that anybody who's listened to the show here would would know. And he said, "Hey, I realized, Chris, I can I can retire." And this was just a year ago. So in his early forties, he was wow. able to retire because of the passive income. So being able to help people do that and spend more time with their families, or you know, do things that are meaningful, I believe that with financial independence, you can live your best life. And I love that. Yeah, no, and I think you hit the nail on the head. I think we've been so brainwashed in society that retirement comes at a certain day year 62 year 65 67 whatever that is it's like retirement really should be a number of a passive income where that's seven thousand or seventy thousand whatever that number is for you so now chris uh you mentioned you had a number of people we should uh i'm sorry Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say we should have we should have another podcast like hashtag F retirement, you know, and just <laughs> let's get rid of retirement. Yeah. Get rid of retirement, get rid of and and figure out like what, you know, how do you achieve financial independence and really mm-hmm. you know create even more meaning? Yeah. Yeah. No. And, well, and even the definition of retire is to like literally the definition is to take out a service. So you're like a. A, yeah. a broken horse taking around back and you know, a bullet in its head because you're taking out of service. And there you go. I think we can all be yeah. of service no still. <laughs> so now, Chris, Absolutely. with that, uh, um, obviously with your journey, if anyone out there is listening to this and maybe they're, you know, they they've had a similar moment, they're in a si- similar situation, but they're, yeah. you know, gosh, yeah. I don't have a dime saved up. 
I need to stay for my health insurance. I've worked for this too long, you know, what or whatever fears or doubts that's holding them back. Uh, what advice would you give to them? Yeah. yeah so first off, um, put, put a plan in place and, okay. you know, don't, don't lose hope. So, you know, what we do for our coaching clients, and actually this is what we do as part of the course as well, is we help people put together a three-year vision, like something you can get excited about. Okay. And it can be discouraging if you say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to leave my job in the next year. I'm going to, you know, leave this quarter. Sometimes you have to, you know, push through and do some things that maybe you don't love for a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, a year is a short period of time. Five, you know, these five-year plans, that's a long, long time. Mm-hmm. I kind of like the Goldilocks three-year plan. So step one, put together a, a vision that gets you excited about what your ideal life is like. Because if you're running from something instead of to something, that's not always healthy. You know, so right. put, put that vision that you're running towards in place and then put a plan in place and find someone you know, whether it's a coach or a community that you could, that can help you be accountable. That's why we put our course together, which okay. is, you know, Hey, put your plan in place. Here are resources to help you do that. And some people may say, Hey, I just want to learn how to invest. I'm, I'm doing great. I love my job. I have surgeons. Mm-hmm. I work with John as investors. They love what they do. They just want to have the flexibility to work a little less. But if you're early on and you say, Hey, I, I got to get out of here. I got to change directions again, take a step back, find some resources to help you put that plan in place. Great. No, I can. Yeah, definitely agree with that. I think I remember an old uh, mentor of mine told me if you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. So put a plan together. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Yeah. And then when you, once you have that plan in place, you know, find somebody to hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a huge, that's a huge piece of it. Exactly. So now as we uh, wrap this up, Chris, and again, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to, uh, share your story with my listeners, but um, I call this the uh, the unscrewed moment. If you want to share with us, for you know, what are you most excited about in twenty twenty three? What are you currently working on? How can people reach out, or maybe you know, uh, projects uh, or the courses and book that you have mentioned before? Yeah. So um, for for this year, the thing I'm most excited about is scaling our business. I brought on okay. I brought on some new people this year to help us grow and impact more people. Um, you know, I think if you focus on impact that can, you know, that really, um, you know, I tell my boys, if you want to make a lot of money, help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So just trying to figure out how to help more people. That's why we put the course in place. Um, you can get a free copy of our book at nextlevelincome.com. Just click on the book link, um, under resources. You'll also see the course in there. You can get a $500 discount or you can even get a free trial by clicking on that. Um, so we're excited to be able to offer that to people because I was, I was coaching people at $30,000 a year. I was only coaching, you know, 10 or 12 people a year, but our goal is to help out 10 or 20 times that number of people. Um, And then, uh, and then also if you're, if you're interested in learning more about the investments that we have, we offer investors an option to invest passively in multifamily real estate apartments, self-storage. We just closed on an RV storage center in Indianapolis. Mobile home parks. We just uh, added a four park portfolio in Greenville. We just officially closed on that yesterday. Oh, congrats. And then, um, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, also express tunnel car washes and hotels. So uh, you can click on the invest link and schedule a call to talk to my team, learn more about that as well at nextlevelincome.com. Sounds good. Yeah. I've been hearing more and more about car washes. So that might be the next thing on my uh, uh, radar to take a deeper dive into. <laughs> so uh, with that, yeah, Chris, man. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule. Uh, and sharing your story of how you screwed the W-2. And again, for all you listening, make sure to go to nextlevelincome.com to get uh, all of Chris's resources as well as a free copy of his book. John, thanks so much. You bet. Thank you.